You know what it is. The one and the only, the triple, the G-O-D. Live on Team GRF TV. I'd like to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the God Speaks on Yo. Coming right up, build episode 24, A Man Called Rogue. You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep it 100 with y'all because see this is an episode where we're gonna go on a deep dive a little bit later but I really want to open this by talking about what this episode was about at its base sometimes in life you have to be dragged down to your nothingness or in some instances realize the complicated way you went about doing something isn't right and a breakdown to what it is at its core, at its simplest, rawest, grimiest form. This is what this episode about was not only for Gintoku, but also for Kiryu Sense. Is that this episode was really about bringing yourself down to your nothingness, remembering why you did a thing. Because we opened our episode with this boy, Gintoku, him, Rolito the Grey Squad. Formerly, currently, that boy Kamen Rider Rogue, you know what I'm saying, Crocodile and Rogue, and all that old good stuff. We open this episode, right? We open this episode with what I like to call a montage of elves. It's like, we start our episode right where we ended it. Like, look at me, who it is, yo, I'm Alucard from Sifia tonight, bitch, I'ma whoop your motherfucking ass. That, y'all remember that, right? We go through, like I said, this L montage of we got Noriaki, who 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 I just finally thought of a name for him. We call him Lil Worm, because he worked for Big Worm, right? So see, he, I'm with you. He like, Gentoku come through with the gun, and it's like, what I appreciate, Lil Worm was unfazed. Like, this dude was straight gooning this whole conversation. Like, he, he ain't blinked. His eyes ain't moved. He ain't twitched. This dude, you got a gun pointed at you. Lil Worm ain't flinched. Get told who walk up, I won't be Kamen Rider. No, no, no. But if you want to be Kamen Rider, bow. Get on your knees and beg. Because it's this simple. You either want your revenge or you want to hold on to your crushed pride or your crack pride in this sense is, you know, foreshadowing. This is where I started to appreciate this episode on a different level. Because Gintoku got on his knees and he begged nose to the grindstone, the whole knee, the full Japanese I'm sorry, please don't cut off my pinky yaka this shit. On your knees, begging for the opportunity to, get to, to distribute this revenge that's on your heart, your mind, and your soul. Sag bitch, uh-uh-uh. Nah, this ain't what you want. They just sat up here and chained this dude up like a fucking animal. Like an animal. Like, chain this dude up like an animal. And all he can say to her, I want to be Kamen Rider. And you can't blame him. Because, again, let's remind, let's just, just put it back in reverse, like maybe 30 to 45 seconds. Remember, we are talking about Gintoku Himuro. A man we met that was so proud of everything he's done, the help creation of Faust, everything he did as the prime minister, quote unquote, of Toto. On your knees, Begging for the opportunity to get revenge on those who have wronged you. And you still got played by Lil Worm, who, who is right now becoming the best character in the show right now. Because, dude, like I said, no, no heart, no soul, no flinching in that dude. That dude is a straight gangster. Chain this dude up like an animal. And then, you know what I'm saying? And you know my favorite part of this whole series, hashtag Bloodstalk did it. After enough begging... He like, yeah, you know what? I, yeah, you know what? What you want? That that flow, that flows in the part of this tweet of hashtag Bloodstalk did it. So so come on, you wanna be you wanna be the strongest comic writer? Finally, finally get him, finally get him the Sklash driver, get him the crocodile bottle. Can't do it. You ain't enough. Do you wanna know what turns this dude crank? 
getting curb stomped. Like I think it was like ten of them, ten of them guardians, like sitting up here doing doing the dance curb stomp. That's where you all your homies circle the dude you curb stomping, and they walk around sitting up here, crit walking on this dude's face. I've had enough of this. Sit up here. Rah! Now who the juggernaut? Like on some dumbness, and I'm just like, wow. Because he sat up here during during this L montage that he turned into the ultimate W. I put my nose to the dirt and I rose up to who you see now. I've lost everything. I got nothing but this revenge and it's burning, burning bright. And this is why you took an L today. Because simple fact, I broke myself down to my nothing. You still got plenty you need to hold on to. So hold on to it while I deliver these L's upon you. But, but don't worry, but don't worry. I'll be back later in the episode to deliver more L's upon you because you ain't shit. Oh, and da, 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 be the one. Now back to the show. Now, Squadron recovered from these L's, right? Recovering from these L's. Recovering from the L's. Like, Sento's like, yo, let, let me sit up here. Let me get my prey on. Let me sit up here, man. Let me let me cross my let me cross my T's, dot my eyes, and say my respect. Uncle Dad, Uncle Daddy Bloodstock show up. Hey, <laughs> what's, what's up, nephew? What's up, nephew? Son, what's going on? Hey, um, I see you over there, right? I see you. I see you. I see you. Look here. I need you to listen close. Listen carefully to what it is I'm about to say. Your soul seem a little bit heavy, nephew, son. Seem a little heavy. Like, I heard about the L you took. Heard about it. Like, you took a massive L. You, you, your boy, the wannabe juggernaut, bitch. On me time to stein, whole squadron taking L's from my boy Gentoku. Because he my guy again. Like, he wasn't my guy for a minute, but he my guy now. Because, see, I just sent him to put in the work now. Look. You think you ready for what comes next? Because right now. You ain't ready for my boy, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Your load too heavy. That's all I'm going to give you. Your load too heavy. Man, my load ain't heavy. Well, they prove it. Sits up here, rubber tank sparkling, Pepsi man, yeah, yeah. Gets L's delivered. Hashtag Bloodstalk did it. Sat up here and handled Pepsi man on it. Handle Pepsi man like nothing broke, like crossed him over, broke his ankles, the whole Nina. He tried to hit him with a super kick. Bloodstock just sat up her and did and did a bison work. And I'm just like, okay. We got them. We all in the down home. We got those. The L's get delivered. You gonna need you gonna need slavery mode to beat me. You gonna have to you gonna have to harness all your ancestors on I'ma stop him. Sits up here, harnesses it, go crazy, then go super slavery mode, and then still gets L's, still catches these L's, and then me and Tad the Stein, Ryder kicks him out the mode. And, and Blood's all like, yo, I'm done, man, I'm done. And, and then there's this nice warm moment between me, Tad the Stein, and Sento Kiryu, like, man, they evicted us, man, like, Man, like, the fun for the Session 8 ran out, man. And it's like, we can't do nothing. But we gonna do something, man. We, we need you, man. Mainly, I just want to be close to Meatan because I am Meatan the Ultimate Stein, man. But I want you to help us, man. We gonna take back. We gonna take back what they took, man. You down? And, and you know, Sento, he just smiles. He's like, I guess. I, I don't know what to really do here. But, you know, we gonna do what it is. We gonna do or whatever. Business is business. So we get back over to Nafita and we like, yo, me time to stand in the building. I'm going to be here forever. Me time, marry me. Me time, let me wash your clothes so I can smell of in your essence because I am me time to stand. Bonjo like, we are the greatest ship. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. And they have a fight. Well, they don't have a fight. They they argue a whole bunch. Um, At some point, Bonjo punches a pillow with... With swimming pools his face on it, it gets really, really crazy because when the powers of the me time stands, the me time stands, me time stands. So it is what it is. I forgot something. 
No, wait, no, that comes after this. No, no, wait, that, no, no. The scene that I'm talking about comes before this. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, Mr. I Have Nothing, a.k.a. Kamarada Roog, goes over to Toto Man. No, no, say Toto Man. I'm sorry. Toto Man is someone else. We, we call him Gray now. There, there, there's an explanation on it. Something about Legends of Tomorrow. Anyway, we go over, we go over here to Red Man. That's what, you know, that's what we call, that's, that's what we call Sato Man. We call him Red Man. Red Man. Do, 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 Red Man. That's what we call, we call. So he over here with Red Man, and they sit over here listening to this conversation that, um, that the homie, that the homie's having with Gray. Like, you got Sato, you got, um, you got, actually, you know what? That scene came right after, before they went back to Nostra. So I'm getting my episode mixed up, is... They go see Big Gray, and B, they tell Big Gray, um, yo, your son, a camarader who whooped our ass, so, um, we just want to let you know, and they like, man, well, if that's the case, man, yo, we need to move the box, man. Music, television, you control, we need to move that box to another channel, ASAP. You got Red Man, you got Red Man, and get Toku Himmer, aka, aka, I've lost everything, I, I, I'm, I'm poor Alucard, like, we gonna run them fools. You gonna run them fools? Yeah, man, all I wanna do is get revenge on my daddy. Man, he treated me bad. Like, one time I was in the back of the car, asked for ice cream. He reached back there, slapped the shot at me while he was driving the car. <laughs> I, I done held up. I done held beef since then. I tried. You, you ain't noticed. Like, since this show started, I tried to murder this fool multiple times to take over the world. Like, pick in a brain and shit. You ain't been watching? But I got you, Red Man. So, the plan is they gonna run up. So, why they over at Nazi to just to jump back from scene to scene or whatever? They go back to Nazi to and they having this old fun old time. And then Sinto's depressed. Like, I'm have to hold all these L's. And then and then swimming pool's like, you don't have to hold all these L's alone. You can hold them with me because we're family. And she makes a cute little face to try to get him to cheer up. Oh, and then um oh, and then all the crazy stuff happens. And you might be wondering crazy stuff, and I'm like, yeah, crazy stuff, because um it's time for revenge. Doom, 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 doom. Coming right around. Because he goes over to the spot. Hey, old man. Get your ass out here. I remember that one time you had to ask for ice cream and you smacked me while you were driving. I'm going to whoop your ass, old man. Get out here. So, yeah, he bring he brings the squad. He bring he bring um Fu and Ross from Final Fantasy VIII, and, and they sit up here, and they're going right free. They got a whole bunch of guns. they just going around killing stuff. They wow, 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 just murdering things, murdering the things, just doing this work. Oh, squad show up, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, um, Sento Kiryu, the juggernaut bitch, me, Tan, the stand, and Castle Man, they all show up, and then, and then them, um, then them, um, them engine bros and women con bros like, yo, Smoke time every day, transform, and then, you know, stuff. Like, go in there and go save Big Gray. All right, Sento runs in there. Get Toku, get Toku has already made an appearance, but there's no reason to really care. He in the room with a gun pointed at his own daddy because he smacked him in the back of the car when he was eight when he asked for ice cream. He's sitting up here like, where it at? <laughs> okay, son, just don't hurt me, please. Honestly, because I wanted to talk about this scene real quick. This right here is going to be like the thing for this immediate character turn when it comes to Gintoku. Because I honestly don't think, excuse me, in any instance, he would have actually shot his father. I'm like, I'm not saying that this dude don't care and this dude ain't no, ain't no villain for real because it is what it is. But I don't think he was going to shoot his daddy. He, he, he punked his daddy enough, made him piss his pants, and took what he wanted. So I really don't think that if it was an instance between that if he had to shoot his father, he would. I don't think he would. And that's going to be the thing because something else happens at the end of this episode which hints at, like, what's really on this dude's mind. But, yeah, he says up here, use the Phoenix bottle and escapes. So it's this, ooh, the chase, and they go chase after them or whatever, you know, and ultimately a fight breaks out. It was a nice little funny scene that, you know, um, me tan the stand, me tan the stand, and we gonna, uh, like, well, actually, you know what, we finna talk about me tan the stand? Let's talk about me tan the stand. Me tan the stand has reached full face turn early in the episode. I should have mentioned it. Full face turn. I'm a good guy now. You know what I'm saying? I love me me time. I love me me time. I love the me time. I am a face now. I am not a heel anymore. I am a face now. 
I am me to understand. Face turn complete. <laughs> face turn complete. Face turn done. So he activate helicopter. You know what I'm saying? You know, Castle Man, he jump on. And then, and then you know, that boy Bonjo, who you got AK the Juggernaut bitch trying to get a ride, can't get a ride. You know, funny stuff. You know, even in all this serious craziness, you know, we get it. So they finally get there. And then Bonjo then ran to the fight. And, and then um, the squadron catch fucking else. See, I, I, I sit up here and explain to you, and I am to a degree, but let's just get to the through line. Everybody that is not Gentoku Himuro or Engine Bro the Rimicon Bros catches L's. And I mean catches L's. Catches L's in a way. Catches L's in a way that's like, for reals? Catching L's. Like, the thing, the thing of, of catching these L's, right? Because it is in this that I talked about, like, what I talked about at the top of the review about how things are broken down and how we break ourselves to nothing. Because in that conversation that, that Sento had with Masora is, I remember when we used to fight for love and peace. Gintoku's like, all I want to do is protect this country, no matter what it costs. Breaking yourself down to nothing. This ain't about revenge. This ain't about this. This ain't about that. This is about my one ideal, my one true goal, the thing that matters, to get myself back on track. In this instance, get Toku's resolve was a lot greater than a lot greater than Sento's. It's just that simple. Sento still holding on. Even, even trying to break it down to love and peace and smiles. Nah. Your balls ain't big enough, partner. What you want, it don't reach big enough in a way that's going to make sense or matter because it is what it is. Resolve is anything. And just on, just on some real stuff, if you don't have a resolve to do anything, you won't ever do it. You won't. Like, let's just take this small example. It takes a lot to, you know, Get on the microphone and say what it is I got to say, regardless of how anyone else feels. My resolve is, is that what I know is what I have to say matters. And if it don't matter to nobody else but me, I want the streets to know that's what it is. And it's going to be whatever it is, it's going to be before, during, and after. Resolve example right here live. You in the mix of resolve. That's why Sento took that massive L, got thrown into the sky wall, and fell. Because your resolve wasn't enough. Your resolve wasn't enough. I want love, peace, and smiles. Get Toku like I'm snatching everything. This may possibly be the downfall of either him, blood hashtag bloodstalk did it. Somebody is gonna catch the wrath because Get Toku's through line is just this. Straight. It ain't no curbs. It ain't no nothing. I just sat down here, put my nose to the grindstone, and had to beg, tied up like an animal. I had enough of getting curb stomped by 10 Seth Rollins. All of y'all finna catch these elves. Resolve. You know, at some point, Sinto's resolve is gonna have to awaken and it's going to be a form because that's how this works. Sento's resolve ain't enough, and you want to know why? Every time he activates the hazard trick, him, you don't want it bad enough. You still want to do things a certain way. Your through line has curves in it. I don't want to lose control. That's wonderful. That's great. But you're not doing nothing to ain't doing nothing to help the cause because all you got is, yo, man, yo, you go transfer on the slavery trick. Yo, we got your back, homie. That ain't enough. I'm not saying that the power of others that don't uplift us, that don't push us forward, but it don't matter how many other people want it for you. If you don't want it for yourself, you will fall flat every time. And that's why Sento keeps losing his mind. Because at first, you just lost your mind for the sake of we need to prove that just non-story, just story-wise and in general, that this is what happens. 
You understood the first time that this is how the hazard trigger works. That if you are not in control and if you don't want it bad enough, you always going to lose. The whole fight at the beginning of this episode with Buzzsaw, where he used the hazard trigger, was just to prove that point. Was just like, your hazard rating going up, but it's doing nothing for you because you still going to lose control. You still going to lose control. Again, remind you, resolve is everything. You either got it or you don't, and there is no in between. That's what it is. However, after all these L's get delivered, we need to rewind back to that part where, you know, Masora was talking to Sento. All of a sudden, like right before they get the phone call that um they get Toku and um and the and the, and the bros ran up on, on the on the joint. She her thing glowed and she fainted, and we don't know why. You ain't purified a bottle, and who knows when. The last thing you did was you healed you healed your boyfriend. Yo, no, I'm sorry, yo, your other half of the destined ship of this show, Bonjo Yuga, aka I'm the juggernaut, bitch. And we've been hitting at this for a while. She's sitting up here walking up her barefoot. She's sitting up here hit up her open her eyes, her eyes mad green. And I'm just like, is this girl finna turn her to the Hulk or something? Because if she is, yes. I wonder, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm just going to leave where it is. Are we looking at another deep voice L giver poppy situation right now? Because I don't know. It's like anything can happen because Masora is a special girl. Her father sat up her and manipulated her to do whatever. It's like we, I've had questions about swimming pools for days, weeks, months, years. I'll be coming right a bit. See, I'm not even finna sing friends. Look, I got questions. And given that the next episode is titled The Idol Awakens, Awaken to what? I swear, she, her, 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 her eyes turned green. I thought a rider belt was just going to materialize and appear on her and I'm finna be. Okay. You get up that go bed. Like, I don't know what this show wants to do. I have no idea. But I love every moment. And like I said at the beginning, and I said now, I appreciate, and I do appreciate what this episode was about and what it means to the suicide of the ball of Gitoku and, and, and Kiryu Sento. What that means for the both of them. What, is it, what does this mean for Sento? Because ultimately, you know another power-up's coming and that's fine and that's dandy, but to forward this character, he gonna have to reduce his step down to nothing. You finna be taking L's for a while. Because see, now we've gotten past. We need to put over again Toku as Kamen Rider Rogue as a legitimate threat. We're past that. We're simply at character ideals clashing and you taking L's because you don't want it bad enough. And that's a whole different thing than doing a job. Because see, the show has already gotten over the point. Gitoku Himuro is a dangerous man. In this state of, I don't want nothing more than to unite the country and rule it under my iron crocodile common writer fist. That's it. That's your through line. We gonna be seeing squad taking L's till Sento get a new form. We gonna be seeing these L's for a while. And not because we building up to a new form, but because of the, again, like I said, the character clash and the ideals of how much can you reduce yourself to the absolute lowest terms? How bad do you want it? How simple can you make your through line? We talked about it. And let me just say it one more time. Gintoku straight. Straight as an arrow. Ain't waver, ain't moving. Sento all over the place. I got to protect these people. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to do this. Have the trigger that slavery this. No. Until you get your resolve right, nephew, you going to continue to take L's. you going to continue to hold 12 letters of alphabets every single episode till you get it right. And I don't know what it's going to take, but I have a feeling. And the answer is Castle Bro is going to die. That's what it's going to be. Castle Man is going to catch an L and it's going to be... And then he's going to finally conquer the hazard trigger. And then that's going to lead into true hazard trigger into some super form or whatever. Because if hazard trigger is all slavery, then you know, um, then the Aryan trigger is going to go off. But see, I shouldn't have said that. But regardless of that, 
Again, let me remind you, because I have to say this again, because I want to illustrate what the point of this episode was and is. You either got it or you don't. You either want it or you don't. And that's what it is. Get Toku's resolve is a lot greater than Sento Kiryu's resolve. And even Bloodstock said that. How bad do you want it? You must not want it bad enough because if you don't, because if, if, not, if, if there's anything other than your through line from end to end, then you don't want it bad enough. And that's just the game and how it go. But yo, one on Triple the GFD. I'd like to thank all you guys for joining me for another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks. So I always appreciate y'all coming through. This was a wonderful episode A Man Called Rogue. A wonderful episode. Like, I, I love. I'm like, I remember, remember when this show started and Gintoku Himro was my guy. He is my guy again. I'm like, the dude never stopped being my guy. He never stopped. Even through everything he went through, I just love this character. And I am loving this arc of whatever the hell, whether you want to call it reverse redemption, complete utter revenge. I want to kill my daddy, whatever you want to call this. This is amazing television to watch. And I enjoy every moment of this episode. I want to know what's up with my girl swimming pools. I want to know what's up with my girl Masora. I, I, I'm waiting. I can't wait till next week till we get back in, dog. I can't wait. But again, again, you know I am the one on Triple the GLD. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for another installment of Triple the God Speaks On. And please, please remember, Triple the God, Kamen Rider Build, Slavery Trigger Activate, Max Slavery! Super best match! Oh no! Yay, yay! Are you ready? The answer is you never are. Holler at you guys next time, man. Peace out! <laughs>